let's start what looker is so on a very basic level uh, looker is a bi tool or a web based application uh, that belongs to or pro provided by the gcp it helps us to it helps user to perform real time analytics and business an analytics so as of now looker supports a uh, dialects with all the major uh, data systems available in the market be it uh, the gcp uh, bigquery aws redshift cloud sql apache druid and snowflake and many other leading dialects and in the in the diagram you can see this is a very this is a very basic architecture diagram and in the middle layer there is a looker or uh, looker uh, which generates sql query as per the data model that you have in in the back end in the place looker generates that uh, the sql query executed on the behalf of user on your underlying database and renders the data on on your browser screen and after that you can run you know perform your analytics or you can uh, find answers of your business questions so as i said looker is a application a web based application and hence it requires some slot of memories and a cpu to function smoothly and there are two uh, factors which can affect its performance the first one is database load uh, which means that either the user is running multiple query at once or the query that that is being issued by the looker uh, is not performant or optimized one and hence taking too much time to execute and you know returns the data the other one is instance load which means uh, the user is putting you know additional burden on the instance or the instance is under heavy usage uh, there might be couple of um, not couple of but more than 20 to 25 calculations table calculations applied merge results and such you know such critical task is happening so to counter these uh, issues of performance we have a framework you can think of a framework called code which stands for control optimize and develop and educate so when we say control which means we have to check that the number of queries is being issued to the underlying database is not uh, you know not uh, farther than 50 so looker recommends to have this maximum connection parameter which means uh, the number of uh, concurrent queries looker looker uh, issue, issuing to your underlying database should be between 5 to 50 but also it also depends on the the quota of your underlying database the second one is optimized we have to make sure that our look ml elements or our look ml is optimized enough to harness the power of caching policies that that is given by looker and then we ha have to make sure that we are performing development of look you know looker content or looker elements by following the best practices uh, of looker then we have to also educate the end users on how to use dashboards in the right way how to create explodes on the right way and how to make sure that scheduling um, you know won't produce any hiccup to the looker server so let's see some best practices which which we can follow to achieve this code framework when we say that uh, okay so optimize looker it comes with the two facets of the this term the first one is query performance and the other one is server performance. So let's talk about query performance. So Looker recommends to have this uh, joint relationship as said to a many to one whenever possible because it is being observed and you know as per the as per the data model we business create in the in the backend is it is being observed that the most granular table in the in the data environment has the most uh, knowledgeable information which we need to answer our questions. And then we have to make sure that our caching policy is being synced with the underlying ETL processes in the data environment. So which means our ETL, uh, so let's consider this example. Uh, we have our ETL in the place, uh, which is being run or refreshing the tables uh, once in every day at, let's suppose uh, 12 AM. But still we are explores and our elements still relying on the default caching policy of 60 minutes, which doesn't make any sense because the underlying database is only being refreshed in 24 minutes and in the looker you are refreshing your content by every 60 minutes so we have to make sure that our caching policy is being synced with the underlying ETL processes to reduce the traffic on the database and also if you see if you have you know more than five or you know more than five joints in the place in your explorer which are which makes your query unperformant so you can think of you know uh, persisting those those data set or those explores by you know executing pdts on top of those explores so hence you can convert those unperformant joints into a into a single table so you can make a, you know persistence as per your need by using a data group uh, uh, and other persistence strategies 
and then if you are you know if you are using cloud sql instance let's suppose because in the cloud bigquery you don't have to provision any infrastructure resources but in cloud sql you have to you know monitor and you know provision the cluster and instances so in such cases if you if you are witnessing the heavy traffic on a database which is which might be right according to your business needs you can think of you know upgrading or adding nodes to such you know infrastructure so this is the another facet of the looker optimization the looker perf server performance itself so as looker recommends try to keep the number of tiles loops or elements you know in your individual dashboard uh, less than 25 but as from you know our experiences of uh, working in couple of projects you know solving problems day by day uh, i especially recommend to you know keep this uh, number of elements as low as possible between 10 to 12 because it really improves the user experiences and reduce the burden on your underlying databases and the another thing is try to avoid using pivots or over pivots in your dashboards because as soon as you mark a dimension or a measure to the pivot looker has to generate an additional query to make this uh, you know visualization appear so for the example you can just go to an explore you know any explore and try to pivot something or some joint or some dimensions you can see in the sql tab there is an additional query being generated to make your you know visualization in that way so which will produce you know more you know more amount of query and add new burden on your underlying database and also consumes browser's memory or you know java memory of the looker and if there is any calculation in your in your in your tiles on an explore which is frequently which is being frequently used in another reports as well so the best practice is to have those calculations in your etl part only in your you know underlying database only and if not then try to perform those calculations in the look ml form uh, because looker recommends to have um, you know uh, less than 20 table calculations in the place if you, if you need to perform any but we recommend to have it at least you know below 10 because as from my observations working you know different clients in my you know working looker journey it is good to have you know table calculation less than uh, 10 and try to avoid the merge result option in the looker so if there is a valid case where you need to perform you know this merge merge option so you can go with it but also make sure that that merge option is not impacting your looker performance or your underlying database you can also think to segregate you know models let's suppose you have a, a financial data so you can create a model dot financial and then you have a sales data so you can you know create models accordingly and also you know there is no need to create table having 5000 rows because no one is going to scroll you know each and every row in the underlying visualization so you can think of you know create some metrics or some you know data data rows to show the aggregate of all those rows but it's not it's not the right practice to show, you know to mark all the 5000 rows in your visualization and this thing uh, you know the question was pdt so try to avoid you know multiple pdt building at the same time because looker has to keep an eye you know each and every pdt schedule and you know monitor each and every pdt schedule and execute them accordingly so try to avoid this uh, you know a situation where multiple pdts are being generated at the same time and multiple delivery or schedules of dashboard is being happening at the same time so there is also a way where you can monitor the performance of your instances or and you know check upon its usage so looker this is a functionality provided by the looker called a system activity dashboard which is nothing but you know much similar to the to the dashboards that user you know made so but the difference is the data which is being served in these dashboard is not coming to your underlying database but the database on which your instance is being hosted so it comes directly from the local server activity you know it just gather all the metrics you know aggregating all the data and presenting it to you so that you can make the right decision you know in by taking consideration of performance and usage so there are five dashboards five system activity dashboards the first one is user activity where you can check the user activities okay so how much time user is being spending on um, git events how much user you know how many how many queries user is being uh, executing on the database then is the content activity where you can check the most popular dashboard and the underutilized dashboards or looks the third one is uh, database performance where you can check the performance of the content how optimized my content is the pdt schedule 
and then the instance performance where you can check the you know scheduling and all those information the last one is the error and broken content dashboard where you can you know check okay so how many content in my looker system is being broken and you can you know you can represent those insights to your customer and make uh, you know make a judgment okay so do i really need this in you know this particular dashboard or report if not it is good to have it is good to delete them because because it will consume the me necessary memory in your looker instances so it is good to have you know keep an eye on these system activity dashboards and represent to the customer and take decisions accordingly so now let's take a look to the system activity dashboards that we have in the looker instances so this is user activity dashboard where you can you know see okay so i have this number of users 95 out of you know people have admin or developer roles and all those informations and also you can you know uh, put alerts on top of these dashboards or tile so if you want to make sure that uh, no users is you know executing query uh, you know this much limit so you can just go click on this you know bell icon and you can put the conditions accordingly whether on you know on the higher aggregation level or on the users individual aggregation level you can set the conditions you can you know as of now the only delivery module is, you know mode is email so you can the you can add the mail of the desired people who can, who going to look after all those system activities you can set the frequency and all the policies all the alerting policies so this way you can also put alerts on the system activity dashboard to keep an eye on everything the other one is content activity so you can check here which content is being used which is unused and you can then further analyze okay do i really need this content and do and then you can discuss with your customer and and if not required you can discard them or delete them so you will have a more, you know under you you can discard the underutilized memory then we have the database performance where you can check how much uh, data from format dashboard is being uh, you know fetching from the cache the looker cache and the user you know on user on the user basis okay so this user fired this much query and and so on so then we have the instance performance where you can check the performance of instance so there is a you know option called auto refresh on so you can you can check okay so how many dashboard is being rely on this particular functionality and we also need to make sure that that this functionality is being used cautiously because this is because this will put a extra burden you know every time you click on the link of dashboard and in the particular window it will clear the cache automatically so we need to use this functionality very cautiously and also you can check which dashboard ha has more than 25 tiles and you can take this is an accordingly and then the uh, you know broken content dashboard where you can check uh, which uh, which content is being broken you can go and fix them and also analyze them do i really need this content and discuss with the customer and delete them to save the memory